Brennan talking to one of the uh, riders about getting lost, Jack Byers, who lives in Northern California now and races pigeons, I hear. Well, uh, the leaders usually don't get lost because they're up out of the dust. But the fellas that uh, are back in the dust, they can get lost because they don't stay on the course. And if you don't stay on the course and follow the line, it's very easy to get lost in that big area out there. Brennan with Steve Hurd about what he thinks is the worst danger. Nice hair do, Steve. I think hidden rocks are the worst thing. They get behind bushes, and if you don't see them, it can put you down pretty quick. And Gary Conrad. Well, the main thing, and especially as dusty as it's going to be today, is to get a good start and uh, just work it from there and uh, play it cool. Don't get overexcited where you're going to crash or anything if you can help it. And just uh, keep a steady pace going. The motorcycles were primarily big 650 Triumphs, BSAs, Nortons, and the two strokes weren't all that popular yet. Everybody gets their tank guard marked. Gary Preston, Jay and Roberts, one of the uh, Lady Victors sponsoring club. Out to a smoke bomb, which is a pile of burning tires, which you probably can't do that anymore. It's a Le Mans start. Bikes, motors off. Most of them didn't have kickstands, so they prop them up with a stick. This is still one of my favorite shots was uh, Nelson Tyler in the helicopter with Davy Jones as the pilot. Nelson invented the vibrationless helicopter mount, which prior to that, he just sort of hung out the door of the helicopter and got a real shaky picture. So this was like really revolutionary photography at the time. And Nelson was one of the few guys that could really make the thing work well. They could pre-run the, to the smoke bomb, so they had their own lines and whatnot. But once the smoke bomb, they'd never seen the course before. This is Buck Smith, who has since uh, unfortunately passed away. Ride a big fire breathing triumph. Of course, funnel into a narrow canyon, and Buck Smith was the first guy through there. First guy to unload in the canyon was uh, Howard Beach. this in the 16 millimeter at the time the video cameras were gigantic things that were really only good for the studio and uh, also with 16 millimeter we could shoot in slow motion which you couldn't really do in video you can see these motorcycles didn't have a whole lot of suspension compared to modern bikes I think Dick Mann put it perfectly, though, when he said, you know, the old bikes, we rode to the limit, but we weren't going that fast. The new bikes, they still ride to the limits, but they're going so much faster that when they unload, they've got a lot further to walk back to get their bike. Buck 
Chuck Smith was still leading. Jan Roberts coming up through the pack with his uh, football shoulder pads on. Nobody wore any uh, armor in those days. Bill Fryan on a 250 Greaves. My uh, youngest son, Wade, did the music for this 2005 version of the Desert Race. And my grandson, Wes, resurrected these old things and did a re-edit on them. So it's kind of all in the family. Kicking a big four-stroke that's hot 50 times is just like riding about 100 miles, especially when it's 100 degrees out. Once in a while riding one of the desert races, you get so separated from the pack that you think you're lost. And the, by then the lime's all worn away and uh, you know, a lot of people ended up getting way lost. And even if you aren't lost, sometimes you think you're lost and get sort of a semi-anxiety attack. Buck Smith still in the lead, flagman out warning about a road crossing is dangerous. We talked to Dick Vick about the danger markings. For danger marking, they'll put three line marks across a trail. For a road crossing, they put six marks across a trail. It's very important to stay on the trail. If you get off the trail, you will not see these danger marks and it could be uh, very disastrous. <laughs> 